The history object contains the URLs visited by the user within a browser window. The history object is part of the window object and is accessed through the window.history property. If you see here, we have an alert with history.length. The window is just implied. This could easily be window.history.length. So if I run that, and it's going to say three. That means there's three items in my history. If I just put back here, we can see there's two here plus the current one that I'm on. And we can also um, do history.back. And this is just a method, it's just like clicking the back key on your browser. Okay, I'm gonna save this. And then I'm going to run that. It's gonna show me the number of pages and then it goes back to the previous page. Now, this can be tricky here, so I can hit forward here to go back to the previous page, but since I'm on code pen, it automatically runs this again, so I can't really change this, and when I hit OK, it's going to go back again. So now we're kind of in an, in an infinite loop, or stuck, so we can't actually get back to that page to, to load it because it's automatically running this history.back. Well, there is kind of a workaround here, so after this question mark, I can just type in turn off js equals true. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing. And because when I press enter here, it's still going to go back because it was already just about to do that. Now I'm going to paste in the website with the turn off js equals true. And now it's not going to run the JavaScript automatically. So I can um, do a make this into a comment, I can save this, I can run that, and now it's it's not going to, oh, I have to actually um, remove turn off JS equals true because I can't run it while that's on. And so I'm gonna go to this, press enter to go to the website again. And now it's going to show four, but it's not gonna go back because I have that commented out. So another thing, you instead of having back here, you could put forward. And another thing you can do is this, history.go. And if I put a number in here, like three, any, any number here, you, it will go back that many times into the history. So now it's gonna go back three pages into the history. Or if you have a positive number, it's gonna go forward pages into the history. Or if you have a zero, it's just going to refresh the current page. But I'm not gonna demonstrate that because then we'll have the same problem with the uh, JavaScript automatically running. But an another thing I wanna show you is replace state. Okay, replace state takes three parameters. First, I'll talk about the last one. The last parameter is going to change the actual domain name up here. So it's going to, instead of saying lyjlgd, it's going to say unicycle.html. The second parameter is not actually used by the browser. It's for possibly in the future, maybe JavaScript will use this, but it just um, sets a name to the, the page. And then this is a state object that you can pass in that you can then access this state later. This can be any JSON object basically. I'm just using a string but it can be a JSON object. And this is going to basically replace this entry in the history. So right now in the history it's going to have this website up here in the address bar. Replace state is going to replace this history entry with this new history entry. So the previous history entry won't even be there. It won't even show this website. It's gonna show this website in, in the history. Now, there's a weird thing with CodePen where it, this doesn't actually work correctly. But if, I'm gonna, if I copy this, I'm gonna open up the JavaScript developer console by doing um, option command J. It's different on Windows. And then I'm just going to run this command here. And if I press enter, you'll see right up here, it changed it. It's now unicycle.html. And if I run this, you can see it's four, which it was at four before. So we haven't changed the number of pages in the history. And now if we do console.log history.state, and I'm going to run that, 
it's going to pop up four and then the console says bow is great that comes from this state here so you can access this first parameter that you pass in by just going to history.state now that's just a way to save some information uh, between pages and when you go to different pages you can access the same information now another thing to point out is that this website up here doesn't actually exist there is no codepin.io slash bocon slash pin slash unicycle.html so it didn't actually load that page when you call replace state it does not actually load the page it just changes it in your address bar up here you can put a full URL here as long as it it's, has the same root URL that you were already on I'm just gonna copy this and bring it into my console and we have an error so let's see what happened oh I should not have had the S. For some reason, I'm not on the secure version of CodePen. So it has to be the exact same uh, beginning of the URL to work. So let's try that again. So now you can look up here, codepen.io slash bow is awesome. So we can replace everything after the main domain name. But if you put something wrong in the main domain name, you get this error that we had up here. And if I run this again, you will see it's still going to have the number four here. And when we ran that, it is going to give me an error here because of a weird thing with code pen. But I want to show you another, one more thing. History dot push state. Now the first two parameters are optional. Push state and replace state are almost exactly the same. So the first parameter is the state. The second parameter is the name that's not used, and the third parameter is what the domain name is going to be. So we'll put this into free code camp. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to bring over to the JavaScript console. That's just because of code pin here. And if I run that, now you'll see it's codepin.io slash free code camp. And if I run this, it says five up here. Remember before it kept saying four, now it's saying five. In replace state, we replace the current history entry with a new history entry. Push state just adds a history entry. So it's still going to have the page you were on in the history, and now it's going to have a new page in the history. So if I press the back button, you'll see there's just an extra item here. Before we just had this first code pin history. Now we have the second code pin history right there. Well, that's the history object. Thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.